Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, we are going to learn more about the Jira Cloud REST APIs and understand why are we using Jira REST APIs for Postman learning, Postman API testing, and also any real time project that you will come across in your career for the API testing. It will benefit you a lot because we are learning from the real time api now i have already explained about the authorization like you can't access jira rest apis directly without having the authorization so you have to basically sign up for the free jira account which i have already explained in the previous video and then use the username that you use for signing up and the password will be your jira token so how you are going to generate that jira token is also explained in the previous video so watch that video first before you jump into the any future videos from here on okay because you'll need the password username and password to access any of the jira cloud apis now let's go to the documentation okay so let me a little bit okay so you can see everything clearly so this was the instance information of the jira right so we had to use the auth okay in order to let me change the view here so i'll have a two pane view here okay so the request now all of these so if i just, so you'll see all of these tabs are the request ones and i'll keep expanding this like this to show you the response so this is the response right it's 200 okay uh what is the byte etc and the time it took to response so this is the response of that instance information for the jira instance that i have signed up okay now let's go to the documentation so to get the jira api documentation jira cloud api docu documentation just google jira cloud api rest api and then i'll open this link here and this is the rest api for the jira software okay jira software cloud rest api now if you want to get access to the jira cloud platform rest api api right so jira software is one of the product which is built on the jira platform so we'll go to the jira cloud platform rest api because this will have everything within that okay so here if you'll see it is all specific for example board epic issue sprint these are all specific to the jira software okay now we'll go to the jira cloud platform rest api and start exploring the rest api documentation from there okay now before we get into you know the details okay let's understand okay so before we get into the api details right for example we'll understand why exactly why exactly the api testing is required right so for example here you see that if you are going to test the jira software for example okay or jira platform now it is not or it is highly unlikely and most of the projects what happens is the development happens parallelly ui is being developed then api is being developed or they are being developed so maybe api is available first UI is not still available, right? So you won't be having that whole end-to-end -end flow available in the UI for each and every scenario, right? Say for example, get project or create project API is ready, but the UI to create a project, for example, from the UI, if you have to test create project, you will go to the project and you'll click on this create project, okay? You'll provide all the relevant details, like you'll select the template, etc., everything, and proceed further, to test the project creation but say for example this ui is not ready right which is very common scenario in the real projects the ui might not be ready apis are ready so what to do should you wait until all those apis are integrated into into the ui absolutely not and that's where api testing comes in picture so as soon as there is an api that is available to be tested you go ahead use the api testing tool and postman is one of that tool there are so many different tools to test apis using the postman tool because we are learning postman so you can go ahead and test the specific apis that are available right now ui is made for end users so that it's user friendly right so creating a project from ui is very simple but in the background what happens in the background actually the calls for example create project okay so if we go to the project here okay let me navigate to the project okay so if i go to the projects here click on the project in the rest api section you will see get all projects create project right so these are the apis that are actually used so if i say create project okay so if i say create project from here this is the api that is being triggered right this post call is being triggered so if this api itself is ready we are good enough to test the project creation 
right from the postman instead of waiting for this integration to happen available in the UI, right? That's the whole purpose of the API testing to do to shift left, right? Test early, right? Testing principle, testing early. Okay, so that's where this create project API will be helpful. So any of these APIs, you see these APIs, deleting a project, updating project, get project, every action that you do on the UI is tied up to an API, right? And that is where API testing is very, very important because first thing you, you will be able to test early if the UI is not ready. Second thing is your API tests are less error prone, right? So when you do the UI, uh, when you do the UI testing, right? If you automate UI, it is very brittle, right? So the locator might not be identified. There are many scenarios wherein uh, due to some network issues, page is not getting loaded, etc. right? But the API testing will be really fast and smooth as compared to the UI testing. And that's where we do the API testing. We automate API max uh, at, at the max, right? I mean, in a wide scope as compared to the UI, right? The testing pyramid principle. So that's the theory part. Now, let's say, let's analyze some of the APIs, okay? So for example, if I scroll down, okay let's say we want to get the projects okay at, at the moment we don't want to see what or create a project because create project will need a lot of data let's go to the get all projects okay i want to see what all projects are available for me okay in my jira instance so get all projects if you'll see here the documentation okay let me so you will see get all project returns all the projects okay but it is deprecated so make sure that you go to the new one so this is deprecated use get projects paginated okay so they have developed new api so we'll go to there okay and this returns a paginated paginated list of projects visible to the user okay and as I mentioned in the left hand side, you will see all of the details about this API, how to access, right? In the right hand side, you will see what is the endpoint that you have to trigger. Okay. So you have to go to the basic curl. Okay. And in the curl, your domain, right? So this is your domain, whichever domain you, uh, it is available for you after you sign up and then rest API slash three project and then search and then you have to use the user ID and the password, the API token and the header accept application JSON, right? It's as simple as that. Just this simple request that we have to prepare in Postman, okay? And trigger it to get all the projects, okay? So here you will see all other details, which is basically from curl itself, you will be able to understand what all you need to do. And then in the right hand side, you will see the success response what response you will get okay so if i scroll down you will see that there are some query parameters as well in the request that you can use you can use the start at okay then you have you can also use query parameter max results okay so how much how many results you want so for example there are 100 projects you just want 50 projects out of it so you can use these query parameters and this documentation clearly shows that yes you can use these query parameters i can use start at max results order by id right i can use the project id itself to get the search the product uh, project i can use the project keys to search the project okay so these are all query parameters supported by this endpoint this get request right then if i go expand here there are three more so these many query parameters are available for this api so in case you are working in Atlassian and you have to test this, right? There are n number of scenarios that you need to test. You need to test all these query parameters are working fine or not, right? Then you need to test all the responses, 200 okay, bad request, unauthorized, right? So these are the responses. So in the documentation for each API, you will be able to understand what exactly it returns. It returns the JSON, okay? In the JSON format, you will get the result. Like this is 200 okay, right? 200 response. This is the JSON format that you will get. Then if it is a bad request, then this is what, you know, return. If the request is not valid, if you are unauthorized, you will see 401. If it is not found, then you will see 404. If, say, for, for example, project is not found, okay, by the search criteria, then you will see 404. So these are all scenarios that you will test. So let's quickly get the projects, okay? So what we are going to do, we'll simply use this curl request. So the URL is the endpoint that you have to trigger right which is basically my domain okay and then followed by this path okay so i'll go to postman and here span 
okay so this is the instance info and i will simply duplicate okay so i'll say duplicate this instance okay and now i will rename it to get project info let me minimize it so i'll say project okay next thing is now this is the url for my jira instance here i have to replace it with path for the get projects which is rest api 3 project search okay so i'll simply i'm searching for the project i'll copy this and i'll go to postman and i'll replace this with one that i have copied okay and i'll save it now the next thing if you'll see is basically the username and the api token which i have already explained how you are going to get your username and api token by signing up in the jira cloud free account okay and where you are going to enter that in the request side okay go to authorization okay in the basic auth select basic auth and if you scroll down here you will put the username and the jira token that you will get after signing up in for your jira account right so put the username and password now the third thing is the header okay so header accept this okay this by default is being added anyways right so in the request let me expand this okay. so this is the request in the headers you will see that accept star dot star is automatically added if you just hover over that means star dot star means that all the response content types will be accepted okay it doesn't matter if it is a text it is a json it is xml it will be accepted so it is already there right so if you want to override you can anyways you know write accept okay and then here i'll say because it's accepting application json so i'll copy application json there and put application json all right so this is this accept is now overriding you'll see this is a duplicate header and will be overridden by the accept header added by you so if you want to override the existing one just add a new one and that this one will override this one okay so now this one will be considered for the request so now if i click on save this request has been saved get projects i'll send it and let's see the okay so you'll see response is 200 okay right so if i send that again you'll see 396 milliseconds this is the response and it is giving me all the project okay so you'll see the description so basically let me go to the values right so this is the demo service project say this project type key is service desk this is service desk project okay this is the next one which is which has the project ideas 1004 and uh, the key is there rah rcv academy hr right so if i go to my jira instance here okay so we have rcv academy hr we have Zoho CRM sample project. We have demo service project. So let's go to the view all projects and see all of these projects are being listed there. So four projects should have been there. Okay. In the response of this API. So RCV Academy HR is there, right? This is again service desk. Then RC, RCV IT service management is there. Okay. Third project. Then Zoho CRM sample project, right? So we are getting basically all four, four projects that are available in my jira instance right so this is basic basic of get project or get all projects in jira instance now if i have to go ahead and test it right so basically there are many query parameters that are supported here right so i can go ahead and filter based on the query parameters right so here if i go to the documentation okay there are so many query parameters right so i can say max results right so if i say max result instead of you know four or at the moment if you see max result it is in the response it is it was 50 by default i think it's you know 50 right so you'll see max result is i can use a query parameter okay in the request and restrict it to just one or two okay or i can filter based on just project by just adding the query parameter which is which are being supported like the the category okay or the the type key right so id project id or the project key okay so let's do the max result first all right so i'll go to the postman here okay and in the parameters right so i can add the query parameter what is the query parameter that is supported max results right so i just want to restrict the results to two i can simply say max results okay as is make sure when you're copying you don't do any spelling mistake there okay and i'll say only two values i want right so you'll say as soon as i have added query parameters you will see the question mark after the search that means anything after this is basically a query parameter and then is equal to two right so max result should be two so if i send this now in the response i should only get two results okay so let me maximize here okay so here you will see max results is two right total was four okay total projects were four 
and max result is 2 which which projects have been returned in the values array you will see the first project that is returned is demo service project right and this service desk project and the second one is rcv academy hr project 1004 that's it right similarly i can go ahead and test that is project key filter is working or not right so in here if i go to the request and in the parameters i want to i i want to use a different key which is project key right so for example i just want to filter project based on the key so in that particular case let me say for example i use a project key to pick the project key from here itself in the response so key is rah i just want rcv academy hr okay so rah and what is the query parameter for the key it is keys right so project keys so i can use multiple keys as well right so i can simply say keys in the query param okay I, i'll just type in keys and yeah it is lowercase keys and in the keys i'll simply say r a okay this key and i'll send it so this time only one result should be there because max result query parameters there right but i have also provided the keys that only this project should be there right so total one is there return because i have filtered based on the keys as well okay so let me minimize this and here you will see only rcv academy hr is available in this particular response right so these are some of the scenarios that you will do for manually testing any of the apis right so based on the documentation documentation will be provided to you all of the uh, examples if you're not sure you can collaborate discuss with your developers architect to see what all headers will be required what user information what authentication information will be required if there is any requirement for the certificate what are those certificates how are you going to you know use them what is the endpoint etc everything will be basically provided along with the query parameters path details the responses right so if say for example i say uh, i want to test you know all the responses okay so i can go ahead and just do an invalid key here okay i'll say just some dummy key there which doesn't exist okay and just send the request all right let's see what happens so you'll see total is zero no re no response right that means in the values there are no projects for which the keys the key is the key that i have provided here right so this is basically how you are going to test the apis manually all right and we are working with this real time api so you know the documentation level the details will that will be provided in your project will be absolutely sort of similar level and detail when you are actually working in real time projects okay so this is about the get project api there are numerous numerous apis the key part is to understand things why you are doing the api testing how you are going to do it right the rest which you will be able to figure out in your individual projects anyways because this is real time project itself so you can easily replicate the same work in your project so that's all for this video in the next video i'll talk more about the jira apis chaining etc so a lot more to come thank you